Shabbat Shalom. And welcome to the Way of Truth through Torah. And it is a beautiful Shabbat here. And we are gathered to go over Bialek and Hazinir. And what does Bialek mean? He went. He went. Yes. Thank you, Valerie. You're welcome. You're hiding behind the wall. can see you. How about Hazinu? Give ear. Listen. Listen. How many of us get told that? You're not listening to me. Grant said he gets told that all the time. Is that what your coach said the other day? When he said, green. Is that what <laughs> Coaches are scary. Okay. Uh, so, listen, guys. Our, our tour portion today is amazing because he's given us all of the things he wants us to do. But it's all about the restoration. It, it is beautiful. And so, we're going to hit Hosea first. Hosea 14. And that we're going to go 1 through 9. <clears throat> which is all of Hosea 14 because I want you to see the beauty behind the restoration before we even get into the Torah portion. <coughs> Did y'all go over Hosea? No. Yeah. Because yeah, it wasn't on the calendar. And please, I've got sinus. It's draining. It's draining everywhere. And so I apologize up no, 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 no. <laughs> And it is, isn't it? Just like such a sinus is so pretty. Okay, Hosea, and we're on page 607 in the Scriptures Bible. And for all of our live streamers out there, guys, if you don't have a Scriptures Bible, and let me tell you, it's pretty much just like a King James, except what have they done, guys? They placed the names that they removed and a lot of other Key words, like Torah. Torah has been put back in. Uh, some of the just original names of places. Uh, the, the names of the towns, the cities, the, the countries, the names of the apostles. Everything is in their original name. So James is actually what? Yaakov. Yaakov. And um, I, I know I saw one day somebody mentioned, well, she uses the Y instead of the J sometimes, and sometimes she does it. And I was like, well... I'm not Jewish, so I, I, I do still use a J. We're here in, in Texas, in the United States, and so there are J's in our language here, right? So forgive me if I don't always use the Y. <laughs> oh, my. I know. L listen to the message and not... So we're going to read through this, and then we're going to go into prayer again before we get into Deuteronomy. <clears throat> and guys, anybody who's going to be reading... No, don't. I'm not a man. Don't old man me. Did you get that from your mama or your daddy? I have a ballerina. The ballerina. Oh, man. Me too. I know. It's a parent thing. I, my dad did it. I do it. She does it. I do it. Yeah. I mean, we, we pick it. up each other's bad habits, don't we? 14 1. Let's get started. <laughs> oh, Yisrael, return to Yahweh, your Elohim, for you have stumbled by your crookedness. Take words with you and return to Yahweh. Say to him, take away all crookedness and accept what is good. And we render the bulls of our lips. Guys, what are the bulls of your lips? It's your sacrifices. It's your praise. It's, that's your offering, verbal offering. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. So we, we render the bulls of our lips. And guys, when it means to turn back to him, what is it? What is the word for that? Teshuvah. And that literally means if you're walking south, you turn around and you're going north. And north is where you find Yahweh. And you are facing him instead of whatever else. If you're, if you're looking in the face of Yah, are you going to be sinning? No. No. You're going to be thinking about the, awful, the awesomeness of him. You're going to be in awe and in reverence. And so you're going to be thinking on him and his word. And not the way you've been walking, right? To Shuba. <clears throat> Asher does not save us, and we do not ride on horses. Nor ever again do we say to the work of our hands, our mighty ones, for the fatherless finds compassion in you. I shall heal their backsliding, and I shall love them spontaneously, for my displeasure has turned away from him. Yah is going to, when, when we get to the place, guys, where we have, we teshiva and we turn back to him, 
his displeasure is going to turn away from our disobedience. And that's what it's all about. We're either his loving, obedient children or we're his backslidden, disobedient children. And we're going to look at backsliding and we're actually going to hit it right off the bat because I want everyone who's going to listen to 15 minutes of our podcast, I want you to hear everything that we need to hear. And, and this backsliding thing is important. It's important today because time is drawing very short. So guys up here, Asher, do you know who Asher is? In, in verse 3, Asher is Shem's, Noah's son's second son was Asher, and he also founded Syria, Assyria. So he's not going to save us. As strong as he is, he's not going to save us. And I'm going to tell you today, he's really not going to save us, is he? No. <clears throat> so I shall love, I shall heal their backsliding. Isaiah 128. No, a, a backslider is, we could say, is someone that's come to the truth and then turns away from the truth uh, yes. in the, you know, rebellion or transgress the, the Torah or for yeah. the old way. Listen, guys, That's, if they've come to truth and then they have gone back to the old, their old ways, that is a transgressor, and that is, that is intentional disobedience and rebellion. Backsliding. Well, intentional disobedience and rebellion, there is a sacrifice. There's no other sacrifice to make. If you already know truth, it's not just a, a sin. To sin is out of ignorance. But to transgress, you know, if you have known the truth and you go back to the old way, that's intentional rebellion. That is not good. That's much worse than we're sinning out of ignorance. So we missed, you know, the festival of Shavuot out of ignorance. Yes, sir. Didn't they, uh, didn't they want to follow making sacrifices for their sons and their daughters because they knew them better? Yes. Yes. But that, who was doing that? Job. Job was constantly making sacrifices for his children. But his children knew the word. Though. They did know the word. He always sacrificed them with sacrifices. I don't know. Well, that was before our Savior came. So I don't know. I mean that's a good that's a good question, but in Leviticus it tells us that if you intentionally sin or intentionally transgress, there's no there's no uh, sacrifice. And Shaul repeats that. He said, you know, our Savior can't climb back up on the cross and be crucified all over again. When he's done, he's done once. Yes, ma'am. No, I'm good. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, that's why it says in Romans 3.23 that we're going to fall short of the glory. Falling short of the glory is not getting to sinning. Sinning is missing this part of it. That's right. I mean, he knows we're weak. He says well, we're weak, but we're strong. We've got to work on our weaknesses. But so God, that's right. But, but what we're looking at right now is that if we, we are sinning, guys, we've got to turn back. He's going to cover your sins. If he knows you're trying your hardest not to sin, <laughs> Bless you. But, but if you're intentionally sinning, if you're intentionally breaking covenant with him, if you're intentionally, you know that today is Sabbath, you know that you're supposed to be here. And listen, guys, a lot of people have to work. We're in a secular world. There are a lot of people who can't do anything different. If they're going to put food on the table for their children until y'all bring something else along, they have to work. Well, that's what I mean, I'm asking. That's different. Like, I can put it in a form where it makes sense in that way that if you overcame things and then doing overcome and you go backsliding, you know, as I say, you know, you're an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. So when I quit that, I quit that for years. You know, now if I go back to drinking again, become an alcoholic again, and then, you know, I can see what it looks like by sin, but I overcame that weakness. I think in a sense, if you overcome that weakness, then when you sin and you rebel, you sin because you overcame it. You just chose to all week and go back to it. That's right. But if you're still working on that process, you know that you're weak on it and you continue to grow and <coughs> overcome it. I can see you've never happens. conquered it. Yes. So once you've conquered it, yes. and that's a good point. So what Pete's saying is that if you're working on something that is really a problem for you, and I think um, we've got a, a young girl that may be coming and she's got some, some issues going on, something she's been dealing with for a long time. When she comes, we don't judge her because it's a walk. 
and it's a daily walk. We've all, we've we've all, all been, been there. there. We're, right. Some of us are still there, guys. Yep. Daily, I have to work on my walk. That's one of the things he, he continues to tell us. You know, remember where you came from. Remember you were stupid like... Absolutely. Yeah. We come yeah. into this walk stupid, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to see, he calls us his stupid children. Yeah. Um, we come into this walk foolish. We come into this walk dirty, nasty, rebellious. But when, so we come as we are, but guys, we don't stay we don't that way. We, we and pray. so after the point of, hey, by after a year, you should not be doing this anymore. At that point, then we address it. But up until then, listen, our doors are open. Right? to everyone and they come as they are but our our, our prayers is that they do not stay this stay the the way they come okay dennis i'm sorry isaiah 128 I'm all ready to them also. okay and i'm not even there yet get there i'm hurrying zion shall be ransomed with right ruling and her returning ones with righteousness and the destruction of transgressors and of sinners is together and those who forsake Yahweh shall be consumed. So forsaking Yahweh is outright rebellion. Okay, so you can look at this right here. In 28, and the destruction of transgressors, which are just outright rebellion, and the sinners is together. So even sinning by ignorance, if you haven't turned about and teshuva and turned back to Yah, listen, they're going to be lumped together, and they're going to be consumed, probably by the fires that you're going to be tossed into. Right? Okay. you have anything else? No? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Make your doubt yourself. Okay, we've got John. Hi, Grant. <laughs> oh, no, come on, stop. Uh oh. Okay, <laughs> <that's all I> <laughs> okay, we've got John 15, 4, and you're going to read Tante, you just stop. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Page 1042. Page 1042. He comes ready, even telling y'all where to go, right? Okay. <clears throat> Is everybody there? I want you to listen to the very first words that Grant's going to read, because these are important. Okay, Grant. <coughs> stay in me, and I stay in you. Wait, that's a full sentence right there. And who is this talking? And this is Yeshua. Yeshua. It is Yeshua. It's Yahushua. It's the one that we hear so many people call Jesus. This is our Messiah that is talking here. And he said, stay in me, and I'm going to stay in you. Who is he? He's King of Kings. King of Kings. He is the Torah. Listen, he is a walking, talking, living, breathing Torah. Look, even a 10 year old knows that. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, that, that's one thing in the Christianity. <laughs> bad luck. Christianity speaks of it. You know, I'm walking with him. We're not supposed to walk with him. We're supposed to be following him. Here's our blueprint of how we're supposed to walk. Mm -hmm. Christianity says, no, I'm walking with you know, inside. That's, that's putting yourself up to his thing. You, yeah, like, you put yeah. yourself equal with him. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We're not. Uh, that's that's right. right. You know, they need to get their mind to understand who they are. He came down to serve. He came down to show that he was serving. That's right. And wow. We should be the ones underneath him because we have no close to not understanding yet. Of course, if you only read the back of the, the book, you see that he's our brother. He's our big brother who was first fruits. And, and nowhere does he say that I'm the father. And nowhere in here does it. Well, he does. If you've seen the father, you've seen me. Well, of course, that way. Yes. I'm saying it as a if, no, you have to go back to the yeah. front of the book to find the true fullness of who he is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as far as they're concerned, it's our brother. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can give that to them. But don't say they're Christians. You got to grow up, right? You got to search out the word. And I'm going to tell you, in everything that we're studying today, you're going to see that <sighs> to be delivered means absolutely nothing without the front of the book. Because you don't even know what deliverance is without the front of the book. Sorry. I'm talking in my head somewhere. <laughs> I came across a verse the other day, during this week, and he said, you know, it's in there. The verse says that he's the king of Israel. 
Not the king of Christianity, not the king of anything else, but the king of Israel. Well, okay, and, and since you said that, Pete, thank you. I'm going to challenge everyone who's live streaming with us today to please look and find anywhere in the scriptures where it says he's king of the Gentiles or king of the Christians or king of the Baptist church or king of the church of Christ. Other 44,000 denominations. However many thousands upon thousands. I heard one time it was like 80,000. There's so many splinters of, well, but the word says this. Look, the word defines itself. Mm -hmm. uh, there should be no questions about what the word says. And, and as I say that, anybody listening today, please check everything that we say. Because we out. try to keep it scriptural and, and in the word. And if, if we're not doing that, please call us out on it and write us a note. Yes, Let sir? We figure out that the Bible is speaking to the Israelites, not the state of Israel, but the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the whole meaning of the Bible comes to you differently. And what the Christian mindset of the denominations. But Pete, they don't know that no. the house of Israel is probably them. I mean, the house of Israel went into Assyria, into captivity, and once they left captivity, where did they go? <laughs> Hello? When, when the house of Israel went into captivity, where did they go? Egypt. Four corners of the world. Uh, he, they were scattered to the four corners. Where's that? Everywhere, everywhere. They went to Mexico. They went to Alaska. They went to Texas. <laughs> so what you said earlier about not being Jewish, you don't know that, do you? I really don't. I might be. Ooh, I made a bold statement there, and Misty's saying you really don't know that you're not Jewish. I could be. Maybe. You look kind of. I feel kind of Jewish sometimes. Oy vey, what are you saying to me? That's Yiddish, but. <laughs> I can do it because I'm Jewish. You know, I'm kidding. <laughs> Guys, I hope that everyone who is listening to our morning session will stay for our evening session because I want you to see that the tribe of Yehuda is going to be saved. They have not been tossed out and replaced with Christianity. Neither have all the Israelites been tossed out and replaced by Christianity. But I'm going to tell you something. John is using those who are in the Gentile nations to provoke them into where they need to be. Mm. Let me tell you something. If it weren't for him wanting to provoke them back to where they're supposed to be, we wouldn't get to, to come into the kingdom. And that's Thank you, of, tribe of Judah. Sir? In the end times, if you're in now, that's how a lot of them will be awakened up is through the hard time, the hardship that's going to come upon them. Ooh. So the wickedness of the Gentiles, the heathen, yes. is going to awaken up the rest of the Israelites. Yes, it is. Stay, stay with it. You know, I'm going to tell you something. John is so awesome and amazing to me because he is waking people up all over, all over Texas in little towns like Mahaya. We found a new sister this week. Aww. Yeah, and she's young. She's a baby sister. It, but he's waking them up everywhere. Tell me we're not in the end times when when he says, my children are going to come back to me. We're coming back home. We're going, Abba, forgive us. Forgive us because we sat on the pew without reading our word, and we listened to what was taught to us from the pulpit, and we believed every word of it. Hook, line, and sinker, and shame on us because each one of us are responsible for what we fell into. We're and guys, if, for our own salvation. Absolutely. Guys, you have to be, you have to have, have to have your own righteousness, don't you, Dennis? Yes. Deuteronomy 6.25, and we're going to read that shortly. you got to have your own righteousness to get to the gate. But shame on us for sitting on a pew for me, probably 20 years, listening to the preachers. And when I finally started digging into the Word, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. This isn't jiving with, with what's being taught from the pulpit. And I would tell you, the sad thing is, is that those teaching from the pulpit know it. They know it's not jiving. And are they changing anything? No. And they're going to be liable for everyone in here. Yep. Everyone they've taught. Misty, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I shouldn't have interrupted. No, that's good. I, I need about, to stop. Um, you know, I, I listened to what you were saying, but I didn't dig for the truth myself. I just saw that their actions didn't line up with what they were saying. Wow. And I, it pushed me away from it. And I think that helped in the sense that I didn't believe that anything that they were saying. So when I got into the truth, I was like, oh, okay. And I know why. Sense. 
But, but guys, they're as blinded as we were because they, the majority of our little pastors have gone to seminary and they've been taught. And, you know, I get mad and I call them the seminary boys. You seminary boys are destroying people's futures, that, that you're stealing eternity away from the people because you're not teaching the fullness of truth. But they don't know any better. They weren't the taught any better. The people sitting in the pews that they're indoctrinated just the same way people sitting in the pews. Well, I mean, they, they tell you. Where do you start reading when you start reading scriptures? A lot of preachers will tell you. Start with Proverbs. Well, isn't this also part of the curses of our fathers? Was having that veil over our eyes yes. until this time when yes. we had to turn to Torah. Yes. So although part of it is our fault for not speaking, um, I know it Brother Isaac talks about there was, around 2007, 2008, there was an awakening that started because that curse yes. of 70 generations was removed. Yes. So we are, that's another reason why we are being, it's happening everywhere. You're meeting people in the grocery store and they're like, Zeke, Zeke, or people are seen by Yone Bob and they're like, wait a minute, that's how those things start. Uh -huh. well, it, it's okay. not just the oh, curse that is itself, cool. but it's also the delusional lie that he gives. The I'm sorry, Pete. Uh -huh. That he gives. Mm -hmm. you, know, you got people that do know some of the truth. Mm -hmm. They do know that Saturday is Saturday, they're sitting yeah. on Sunday. It's a delusional Those lie ones. that he gives them. Aside from the generational curse. Well, and, and I'm going to tell you, a lot of cognitive, cognitive dissidents, cognitive dissidents. You must be Mexican. See, <laughs> Senor. <laughs> See. So, <laughs> so, the cognitive dissidents, and Misty, you can probably say it much better than me, she's keeps people, stop <laughs> it, keeps people from, from being able to grab hold of the truth. Because listen, to, to suddenly go, oh, the Sabbath is Saturday, not Sunday. You have to come to grips with the fact that you believe the law for 20, 30, 40, some people 60 years. You believe the law and you went and worshiped on Sunday. When's the day that y'all says, come, come visit with me? It's on the seventh day, not the first day. And what is that day? Sunday. The day. It is a sign. Between you and Father. Between our Father and us. When he looks down from heaven through that glassy that magnifies everything on the earth, and he looks down, he sees all these little lights all over the world on Shabbat, celebrating and worshiping him. What do you think he does? There's the apple of my eye right there. That's part of the house of Israel because they are worshiping me. They're spending time with me. And this is the day I told them to do it. They're obedient. There's some of my obedient children right there. And how do we get all the way off? Poor little Grant. Is that Grant? Grant's like, like, I've only read one little verse. And look what you did. You sparked a huge... Go for it. Don't you love how she blames the hot seat? I have a question. Okay. Oh, What's the seminary? Oh, mm -hmm. the seminary is where the majority of young men go to be taught the Bible, to become a preacher. And I was talking to one such young man, he's older now, but we were talking about Bible, and he actually said, well, I can't argue with you over what's in the front of the book. I don't know it then how are you preaching and what are you doing up there in a pulpit preaching and teaching the word? The, the word is the whole thing. It's not just a little big sliver. I'm sorry, that went really wrong. Well, a, but it's at school. Seminary <laughs> is pastor college. It, pa it is. It's pastor. controlled pastor college. Yeah. Yes. So that's what he goes speaking of, that some yeah. should not be teachers. Because yeah. when we leave it, not sheep and the blind, we will get. I had a young man that worked for me and he was like, yeah, I got a church. I'm going to be a preacher. And I said, wow, I didn't realize you were so versed in the, the Word. So you've read the Word from cover to cover? <laughs> no. So you're going to teach something that you've never even read? You're going to teach something you don't know. You not, not only you haven't read it, you don't know it. You haven't studied it. Is that what you're telling me? He was like, uh, I don't, I, I don't know if he actually went and became... A preacher at that church but listen this is the majority of our preachers they haven't read the Old Testament they haven't read the front of the book which gives total meaning to the back of the book if you read the front of the book you understand that in the beginning that our Savior was there with Yah when he created everything and he created everything 
through him. It says that in John 1. It, it says sounds, that in John 1. It sounds ludicrous to read half of a book in the first place. But then misty, misty, you know misty. Is. Look at this. This is a sliver. Right. It's not even, well, I like half, the way. It's not even half. But, it's not even half. But I mean, you yeah, don't no, read regular books. Yeah. Just the back part of it. Just a little piece last of it. Last chapter, you know. Or I mean, the I last page. That would read the very well, last a great chapter, book. but then you should start to buy it. But the last chapter or the last book. Yeah. You miss the, the meat of the whole book if you just go to the back chapter. And so this is the back chapter. The <coughs> Brihadashah, or the New Testament, is the back chapter. And guys, listen, it wasn't written for how many years? After our, our Savior yeah, ascended. 150. 150 years after our Savior ascended into heavens. That's when the, the Brihadashah came into existence. Yeah, the New Testament even is an easier read. It's oh, it's way yeah. easier. You know, than the, how many yeah. times does it speak in there? The word. It goes the back word to the Old Testament. Talking about, you know, I mean, I just don't. If you've got a good Bible, it's going to have the right wording in it, and it's going to lead you to go, "What is this talking about?" I, you know, like I said, I did. It, I did the NIV. You know, people say no. I, I don't mind. I started on NIV. Is that if you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you? Because I did from the New Testament. And you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, it will lead you to the truth. Even I started in the I started in Genesis in the big huge NIV study Bible mm -hmm. is where I started and that was back in nineteen eighty nine. That's when I started in it. And when I got through and it didn't take me but a few months because I was like, Oh my goodness and then when I read through the second time I was like, oh, Wow. It's not even the same book I read last time. Then when I got in the third time, it was studying it, and I was like, goodness gracious. And then it became alive, and I dreamed I was in the desert on a camel, riding with all the nomads. <laughs> and that's how you read the Old Testament, you actually live. It's pretty place there. That's right. Yeah. But, but guys, it, it should, when you read, it should spur, it should stimulate a hunger for the truth. And if you haven't been stimulated to that hunger, then it's very possible that Yah has not called you. As John 5 says, he's got to call you. So if he hasn't called you, well, I mean, ask, ask him to get on that phone and call you up. He does, he does call, <laughs> but the desire is not to seek in him. That is where the difficulty is because I can tell you for myself, it was the fourth time that I started reading the Bible when I actually finally got into it. Mm -hmm. It's when, when I told him I was selling dope, chasing money, and drinking. <coughs> I was sitting in the living room. It's like, this got to be more than I can just miss. Yes. And you open the part up to the verse. All I do is open the book up, and right there, where, you know how I feel with my mom abusing me. Why does she hate me? And it says, you know, they hated me for no reason. Yes. So they're going to hate you. Wow. So when he calls you and you break that, you got to break that chain of wanting to seek him. Because he continually they calls. Then he will open your eyes. Mm -hmm. But you have to want to break that chain first. Mm -hmm. Until you break that chain of your own desires, there's no way you're going to, want, you're going to choose to seek them because you still want your own desire. So what do you get from most people who are still in a Christian church when when they're like, why aren't you eating pork? Or why are you meeting on Saturday? What do you get from them? We get the delusional lie that what they're being, what they're being taught. Mm -hmm. not the so the church. pastors are, are bringing it down to them. They're telling them all because they're doing... They're not walking out earning salvation. They're walking out past your salvation, what he believes and what he wants to preach. Is that going to get you in the kingdom, guys? Yeah. It's not going to get you yeah. in the kingdom. And, and we're fixing to see right now because I'm actually going to let Grant finish his, his John 15. <laughs> you have any more questions, you little troublemaker? <laughs> okay. He's in 15, and you're in verse... Four. <laughs> oh, wait, that's where we started, Six, right? <laughs> okay. As the branch is unable to bear fruit of itself unless it stays in the vine, so neither you unless you stay in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who stays in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. Because without me, you are able to do not. If anyone does not stay in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up, and they gather them and throw them. Then into the fire and they are burned. Hold on just a second. So you're trying to tell me if you're a backslider and you don't stay in Yahusha or stay in the Word and Him staying in you, that you're like cut off 
you fall on the ground, you dry up, and then someone comes along and gathers you up and does what? Throws you in the fire. I get thrown in a fire. That's not a good thing, guys. Who wants to be a dry branch? D does Paul also tell us that a branch can be grafted back into the tree? It can be. But listen, if you're a branch that has been lobbed off, dried up, yeah, there's going to be, it's going to take a while for you to be grafted back in because you've, you've got, well, you'll be grafted back in, but it, you're going to probably have some you got issues dead leaves yeah, and you, have you may not produce fruit for, for a while. You always have consequences for your actions. And, and guys, this is where so many people don't get it, is that when we sin intentional, out of ignorance, doesn't matter how you're doing it, there is a payment that has to be made. Now, y'all's going to forgive you, but you still have to make the payment. I will yep. not be deceived. You will reap what you sow. That's what he says. Mm -hmm. Did you hear Valerie say it again? I will not be deceived. You will reap what you sow. No what are what? you sowing? What are you sowing, friends? Are you sowing discord with your, your friends? Are you gossiping about everyone? Are you stealing? When the boss isn't looking, I'm just using some things That's that... That's like he's saying. Yeah. I'm always watching. I'm always there. You can put on the show out here all you want, yeah. but I'm not going to be deceived. You're going to read this. Does y'all know our heart? Yes. Absolutely. We get above all. And that's very unfortunate for some of us. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I hear... Especially the ones that say it. Oh, he knows. Well, when I said it, it was really Wait, bad. Wait, you got... <laughs> say it again. He knows my heart. What? You... You you don't celebrate. Oh, wait. I don't celebrate Christmas. But you do. Why are you celebrating Christmas? Oh, no. It's no, I know you would season. never. I, you're supposed to be like role playing. You're supposed to be role playing with me. He doesn't celebrate right, Christmas. And guys, listen, this should be a really good lesson for you parents out there going, oh, well, I can't stop doing Christmas. I've got kids. This kid doesn't celebrate Christmas. What is Christmas to you? Oh, my God. Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the day that he celebrates, and it's not Christmas, and it it is a so celebration of life. <laughs> Are you Jewish? No, but he's chosen to be Israel. He's chosen to be Israel, just like Ruth chose to be Amen. an Israelite and follow Naomi. So, <clears throat> You're talking very about good. grafting in. We graft in to Israel. We do graft in. And who's the root? Yahusha is the root. The tree is Israel. We graft into that tree. We're the wild. We are the wild olive tree, guys. That's the question I got about when you speak about because of sin. Because the Jews know the Torah. When you go to chapter Romans 11, the Jews can be grafted back in. They're going to be grafted That's back what I'm in. Mm -hmm. where, where is that rebellion seeing at? Where is the sacrifice for getting grafted back in? Okay, so you've got them. They don't know Yahusha. So do they really know Torah? They really don't because they've even taken out Isaiah 53 I mean, and they've that, added the Talmud, which is totally out in left field. They're following their own righteousness. But they will, their eyes are going to be open. When their eyes are open, then they're going to see Yahusha and they're going to see that he indeed, you know, how many are being taught Isaiah 53 now? The like the Christian like the Yes. Okay. Yes. But I'm, I mean, just a question I have: the Jews will be, some will be grafted back in. Yes. I don't know. Maybe there's no more sacrifice. Maybe why he punishes us because there's no more, you know, the Messiah yes. is our sacrificial lamb. That could be the thing too. That that's what the end of our sins. We're going to get That's where our consequences come in. I see what you're saying. What What's yeah. beautiful about today is that, guys, he's going to forget our sins and toss them into the ocean deep. Uh, there will be a time when, at the end end of times, there's not going to be time for payment and repenting. And I mean, we yes, repenting. Yes, are you winking? No, I'm, not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm winking back at you. <laughs> Did you wink? And it got stuck. It's a sign. <laughs> so like a, what? If I got like, <laughs> I'm on my face. Baseball suit. Have my eyes. Let me see. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. That's a good point, though. What yes. You, what you're is, oh, I haven't hit. Do not disturb. Sit, sit quite. Yeah. There. 
Do not disturb me. Okay, keep going. If you stay in me and my word stays in you, you shall ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. What is his word? The Torah. Torah. The Torah. The and, and we're going to read this again in a little bit because it, it also pertains to something else. But what does Proverbs 28 9 say? Who's got 28 9? The one that turns that's me. Word. Do you? Go ahead and read Very that right now. Yes, those who turn their ears away from even hearing the Torah, mm. what is your, what is your, do what? Oh, sorry. Oh. Your prayer, even your prayer is an abomination. Guys, how many people go, I don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. I'm not under that law. But Jesus came, he did it all. Listen, he did. He did everything that he had to do. Now, you better do your part. And that means walking out your righteousness. Who wants to be an abomination? Listen, even the food you eat, over here in Leviticus, it tells you that even the food you eat will make you abominable. Look at uh, Leviticus 20, 25. <laughs> Excuse me. 20, 25. And I totally went right by it. <clears throat> In 2025, and it is on page 127, it says, And you shall make a distinction between clean beast and unclean, and between unclean birds and clean, and do not make yourselves abominate, abominable by beast or by bird or whatever creeps on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. And you shall be set apart to me, for I, Yahweh, am set apart and have separated you from the peoples to be mine. But that, I thought that was nailed to the cross. Didn't no. you say that right there? Nope. Until, well, until Yeshua comes back, hangs on the cross, and you can change your eating habits. That's not true, huh. is it? Read, read Proverbs 28, 9. He who turns away... His ear from hearing the Torah, even his prayer is an abomination. Guys, listen to me. How many Christians out there have you heard say, I've been praying over this, I'm praying over this, and he just doesn't seem to be hearing me okay. anymore. No wonder it's so dark here. Whoa. <laughs> and like, we were over here like, we're going to use our phones to... Huh? When a Christian saying, no, I'm not under the law. But you're not under the law. You're not under grace either. You're not under grace either. The only reason grace exists is the law. Listen, the, without the Torah, yeah. there's no need for grace. Mm -hmm. If there's no Torah by which to judge your walk, you don't need grace. The word grace is only mentioned three times in the, in the Gospels. Did you know that? Mm -mm. Like something that is so... That they stand so Such much a doctrine. Why wasn't Yahushua talking about this this grace that they speak of? Well, and why, why does he say, I didn't come to abolish the laws, yeah. but to show you how to walk it out? It's only it's, mentioned one time where they didn't have to do nothing to receive it. Right. Only one time was grace mentioned where you didn't have to, it wasn't, um, you do again. this and, and I will have grace on you. It wasn't a reciprocal thing. It was it was like just freely given. When was that, Dennis? I, I forget exactly what verse, but I know it's Dennis. Right. in the New Testament. <laughs> Dennis. Okay. You okay. mentioned three times. I just gonna mention the one time it was Okay, let's keep going, guys. We've made it through verse four. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew seven twenty three. And guys, this, I'm going to tell you something. This Christian is a, four times, I'm sorry. Scary. Four times in the gospel. Four times in the gospel. This is a scary, scary set of verses in Matthew 7, 23. Starting in actually 20, <clears throat> 20. No, 19. Starting in 19, yeah. Every tree, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then, by their fruits, you shall be known by you you shall know them. Not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, shall enter into the reign of the heavens, but he who is doing the desire of my Father in the heavens. Many shall say to me, 
in that day, Master, Master, have, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done away mighty works in your name? And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. What does lawlessness mean? Anything that goes against the Torah. Lawlessness means that you're doing anything that goes directly against the Torah. Sin is lawlessness. So you're being, sin is lawlessness. Transgression is lawlessness. So let me tell you something. Our Savior is not playing around. Not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, shall enter into the reign of the heavens, but he who is doing, 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 walking out, working. This has everything to do with your works, guys. Is doing the desire of my Father in the heavens. What is his desire? What's the, the desire of a loving daddy? Walking out of his tour and obeying his commands. Obeying. Obedience. What is it? What have I told you to do? And he taught Misty last week. He said it over and over and over. Guard and do. Guard and do what I've told you to do. Guard and do it. Guard and protect it. Do it. Walk it out. <laughs> <laughs> Keep, yeah, let's see, 24, therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and does them, does them, that means being obedient to them, and this is in the Brit Hanashah, this is in the New Testament, this is in Matthew, yeah. where do you get live streamers, where do you find anywhere in the Brit Hanashah, the New Testament, where it says that the law has been done away with, go through all of the gospels, go through all the books, leave out Paul, because you don't know who he is, <laughs> you don't know what he does, you don't know that he's a rabbi, and that he always obeyed the Torah, leave his writings out, go through everything else and find me one place where Yahusha or anyone else says the law has been done away with. Find it. I just don't know why he wouldn't say that Find himself it. if it was that important. He knew everything. He even knew that he even the day it. that he was coming back, he, no one would know but the Father. So don't you think he knew, hey, I am the law, but hey, when I'm gone, when I sin, it's all been done away with. So who calls on his name? Many will say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in your name? What name are they prophesying in, guys? Jesus. Jesus. God. Jesus. I got the Holy Ghost. And cast out demons in your name? They don't know his name, guys. If you don't know his name... Do you think you're prophesying in the name of our Savior? No. Probably demons. Basically, that's what they're doing. If they're casting out demons in someone's name and doing many mighty works in someone's name, and it's not the name of Yahusha, Hamashiach, or the name of Yahweh, then it's not the Savior that we worship, is it? I'm just saying. They're doing all these works. Who, who else has got the power to allow them to do, do these kind of... Hasatan. Hasatan comes as an angel of light. And he comes to steal. And he comes to deceive, the, to deceive and to destroy. So the only other person that it would have been would have been demonic. And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you because you don't even know my name. You don't even know his name. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. It's just like when we walk out Torah, just like Val said, people that you run into at the store, they can say, they can spot you because you're the only one that looks set apart or the one that acts set apart. Like he um. knows his reflection because of, you know, if I'm a duck and I walk like a duck, I must be a duck. All the ducks. Yeah. You know the ducks. <laughs> My ducks. Right. So he can see his reflection in us if we are walking it up. And, and that's just like what Pete was saying. Go on to verse 24, mm -hmm. and there it is. That's the boom, like slam it down verse. Mm -hmm. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, what are those? What words would that be? Torah. <laughs> Excuse me. And does them, obeys them, walks them out, shall be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. And who is that rock? Yahusha. It's Yahusha. 
Listen, this whole book is an integrated work. It, it, the front's connected to the back. Okay, let's keep going. We're still not through with Hosea. Okay. We're in Hosea chapter 14, verse 5. I shall be like the dew to Yisrael. He shall blossom like the lily and strike out his roots like Lebanon. His branches shall spread and his splendor shall be like an olive tree and his fragrance like Lebanon. Those who dwell under his shadow shall return and they shall revive like grain and blossom like the vine and become as fragrant as the wine of, of Lebanon. Guys, this is restoration in a big, beautiful way, isn't it? So when we're going through Deuteronomy, I want you to remember there is hope and this is our hope. This is our hope by walking it out, by doing what our, our Father has told us to do through the breathed out word, the walking, talking, living, breathing Torah, whose name is Yahusha or Yeshua. Is there another pronunciation? We don't argue over the names here, um, but it's not Jesus. That's not his name. No, he's a Christo. Hmm? <laughs> he's a Christo. Oh, it's not Christo either. <laughs> right. Jesus. 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 Guys, what, what does the word Jesus mean? Hell Zeus. Hell Zeus. Son of Zeus. Son of Zeus. Son of the horse god. What does Yahusha or Yahshua mean? Yah is right arm of salvation. His name has beautiful meaning, but not if you call him Jesus. And guys, listen. When 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 Hasatan, when the Antichrist comes, who do you think he's going to come as? The lawless one. Who's the lawless one? Who is the only one that's preached as a lawless one? Jesus. Jesus. Because the law's been done away with. Law of Except that law of tithing. <laughs> wow, and that was started in Leviticus too. Isn't Wait a minute, what? It, isn't that interesting how they <laughs> nitpick and choose the ones they want to keep? So, guys, listen. <clears throat> Nothing's been done away with the back. Well, you can't say there's no law, but you've got all those laws in common. Mm -hmm. How do you connect those two? Yeah. They can't. Not not if they're chaotic. saying there is no law. That's why nothing is... Look at the churches. It's emotional. They're falling apart. They're, they're going to get there. They're going to sing these beautiful emotional songs, and they're going to weep and cry, and they're going to run down the aisle. and like, Get they, real loud and start shaking and little tears. You know those preachers? Yes. Oh, I'm sweating. <laughs> the emotion that comes with their decision. You know, he says... The heart is crooked above all who can yes. trust it, and that's what they use to go off of this emotion. Well, I believe because my heart's telling me. Don't listen to your heart, guys. Listen, listen to reason and logic. That is right. Know the word, study the word, so that when you you're faced with decisions or choices, that you choose right. Because listen, I've chosen wrong many a times in His way is much better than back, my way. Back it I, up with the word. Back it up with the word. And listen, I'm going to tell you once. something. If you're still and you allow him to answer your, your questions and solve your problems, it's not going to look anything like what you thought it was going to look like. It never does. I'm always like, wow. That's why I'm just me. And you're the awesome, amazing father. Because you know how to, to solve every problem that I've got. And it, the best way for you. Yes, for everyone. Mm -hmm. No one gets hurt. No one's no one gets damaged or trampled on when you allow y'all to step in and solve problems. And every time you ask you to pray, it's gonna be the best way to, to get closer to him. That's it. He draws us in, doesn't he? So he's he is a fisherman. He's casting that net and he's pulling us in. All 153, the house of Israel. That's what that numerology, that's what that stands for. He's drawing his house in. He's waking his house up. He's throwing the bait out. We're waking up. Wake up. Wake I mean, up. Like you, uh, you're like an alcoholic. You know, please, God, let me get this six pack. Let me go get this six pack today. And they get the six pack. Oh, thank you, God. They ain't got nothing to do with God. No, but I'm going to tell you something. A lot of times he lets you have exactly what oh, your, your you heart desires. Bless you. Saying, he said, Satan's going to find your way to help me get my cigarettes. <laughs> 
That's well, that true. It's DNS. Well, I mean, it's true. You, you know, you don't have anything, and all of a sudden you have something to get, something you desire, and it's coming from a different place. That's right. Um, that That's it right there, Misty. The, the oh. things, sometimes the things that we get to spend on things that we don't need, it's coming from someplace else. They just say that in your prayers to keep you in the place. That's right. <laughs> Don't do that. Sorry. Okay, here we are. We're at the, the very end of Hosea. You ready? Yes. <clears throat> Who is wise and understands these words, discerning and knows eight. them. Oh. Where are we? Did I miss verse 8? Yes. I'm so sorry. We're not at the very end. Sorry. Verse 8. What more has Ephraim to do with idols? It is I who answer and look after him. I am like a green cypress. Your fruit comes from me. Like this, isn't, it? isn't that beautiful? Yes. If you're bearing fruit, it's because you're rooted in him. That's the only reason we can bear fruit. Otherwise, we're going to be lobbed off, right? We're, we're obviously rooted in the wrong at little e Elohim. Not even in the right field. That's ooh, <laughs> I like that. Not even in the right field. Okay, so now can I read nine? Yes, you're gonna let me. Okay, Go who is wise and understands these words? This whole word. Mm -hmm. Who is wise and understands this whole word? Discerning and knows them. For the ways of Yahweh are straight, and the righteous walk in them. Walk. The righteous. Deuteronomy six twenty five. Dennis, what does that say? It is our righteousness, or righteousness for us. On the guard to do all the command before Yahweh our, our Elohim as he has commanded us. So if we're righteous and we're walking in his commandments, we're guarding them and we're walking them out. He says, For the ways of Yahweh are straight and the righteous walk in them, but the transgressors, oops, stumble in them. Go to Romans 9.32. Who's got Romans 9.32? Grant. 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 <coughs> Pete. <laughs> Sorry. Pete has Romans 9.32. Me mistake. Okay. 32 through 33. <coughs> Start at 30, Pete. Do you mind? Thank you. What shall we say then? That nations not falling after righteousness have obtained righteousness, even the righteousness of belief. But Israel falling after the Torah of righteousness has not arrived at the Torah of righteousness. Why? Because it was not a belief, but it's my work of Torah. So they stumbled at the stone of stumbling. As it has been written, see, I lay in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock that makes for falling. And everyone who is believing in him shall not be put to shame. You know what? Go ahead and read down through 10, uh, 5. <clears throat> Joy, brothers, my heart desire and prayers to all the king for Israel and for deliverance. For I bear them witness that they have an ardor for all the but not according to knowledge. Hmm. What does that mean? They have a love for Elohim, but it's not according to their knowledge. What does that mean? Not according to scripture. They love something it, they don't know. It's not scriptural, guys. <clears throat> like the Christianity mindset, they think they, they love God, they don't know. They don't even know. How, how can you love what you don't know? You can't. It's superficial. And when all the rules come into play, it's gone. It evaporates. It's like a man being in love with a picture of a model on a magazine. I mean, you don't, you love just to look at it. You don't yes. And it's not even, a lot of them are not even real anyway because they've been so enhanced. So it's in love with a dream. And it's the same thing Christianity. If they're in love with something they don't even Wow. I have it. never heard it put together like they that. I don't know who the Messiah is. <laughs> but this is more like a love, like a, a, a mother or father has for their child, not even knowing their child yet, not even knowing that it's born yet, mm. you know, but once it's born, you don't even know this person that you love them so much. That's it's right. Like, it's, it's part of you. 
What were we born to do, guys? To obey. To, to walk out Torah with him, to be his children. That's what we were born to do. That's why it's so easy to walk out the Torah. It's natural to us. <clears throat> okay. Keep on going, Pete. For the Messiah is the goal of the Torah unto righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moshe writes about righteousness, which is of the Torah. A man who does these shall live by this. Wait, what? A man who does them shall live by, live by this. So a man who follows Torah shall live by the Torah? Mm hmm. But them who don't follow Torah shall what? Surely die. Well, that goes with the verse, you know, John 6, 40, 46, 47 about <laughs> Moses writing. You don't believe Moses writing, why would you believe me? Why would you believe Yahusha? Because he Moshe wrote about, wrote about Yahusha. Yeah. That was who he wrote about. That's who walked them all the way through the, the wilderness, was our Savior. I mean, that's two witnesses alone that goes back to Moses. That's right. And this stumbling block. Okay, let's see here. Leanne, do um, First Peter, you going to come up here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Who is the stumbling block? <laughs> it says uh, in 32 of 9, it says, Why? Because it was not of a belief, but as by works, as by works of Torah, which is a Talmud. Okay, they they were man-made laws. It was the man-made laws, not the laws of Torah. The proper word here is Talmud, which is still a law, but it's a law that the Pharisees came up with. So what let's read. Traditions? Let's read yes. this. That's right. Traditions. Traditions of our fathers that have made us. Yeah, that Talmud is it. Is a Torah with the tradition of man. Do what? Made word for man. That's right. That and they did really. The tribe of Yehuda and Benjamin did it trying to protect the Torah. They did it with good intentions, but they added onto it so much that who could keep it? No one. That's what Yahushua said. He said, you can't even keep it. You've added on, worried about tithing the mint? Listen, stop. So, he says, Oi, <laughs> shall we go there? Maybe not. He's, so see, I lay in Zion a stone, a stumbling, and a rock that makes her falling, and everyone who is believing on him, that rock is him. Shaul tells us right here, it's him, shall not be put to shame. Everyone believing on him and walking in him shall not be put to shame. Go ahead, Leanne. Let me get over there to it. So you're in, we're in 1 Peter mm -hmm. 2. 2-6. Two, 2-6. Six. Two, six. Is everybody there and ready? Okay, let's do it. Because it is contained in the scripture, see, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone chosen, precious, and he who believes on him shall by no means be put to shame. This preciousness then is for you who believe, but to those who are disobedient. The stone which the builders reject has become <coughs> the chief cornerstone. Okay, Leanne just hit it right there. This cornerstone, it says, this preciousness then is for you who believe, but to those who are disobedient. If you believe, you're going to be obedient. He is defining it right here. You can't really bounce back and forth and go, oh, it's just through belief, because he goes on to say, those who are disobedient, disobedient to what? The Torah. The Torah, mm -hmm. to everything that he wrote in the front of the book. This preciousness then is for you to believe, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And listen to me. The tribe of Yehuda trips over this cornerstone because they don't think he's come, and the Christians trip over this cornerstone because they think he, is, he has come, and he has, but they think he's it. Just believing in that cornerstone it's going to save you. They don't think they have to do anything. But, it, but Peter tells us, those who are disobedient, they're going to trip over this. Keep going. Um, eight. eight. And a stone of stumbling and a rock that makes for falling, who stumbles because they are disobedient to the word to which they also were uh, appointed. 
but you are a chosen race, a loyal priesthood, a set apart nation, a people for a possession, that you should proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his mar mar marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now the people of Elohim, who had not obtained compassion, but now obtained compassion. So we were not a people because why? He divorced us. He divorced the house of Israel. He cast us out of the, the country of Israel. He threw us out to the wolves. He threw us into other nations. And we what did we do as soon as we got there? We worshiped their gods. Look at us here. Look at us in the United States. What are we worshiping? The God of, listen, it's Roman Catholic God. This is all about the Roman Catholics. First day Sabbath, they're, they're worshiping on the first day, the Sunday, for the sun god. Day number one, Rome changed it to the Sabbath day. And guess what? All of the people in the world followed suit. And what does Rome say? Hey, our authority is shown by the fact that everyone in the world follows suit with the first day of the week being the Sabbath. Right. Look at them. Show. They're all Look doing it. Yeah, it, it shows who, who, which, which authority are you under? Are you under Rome's, which is probably the beast? Are you under Yahushua's, which is our Savior? You're under one of the two. If you're, if you're not following his commandments, you're following his, his commandments. He's not down there, but <laughs> point down there because everybody thinks he is. <clears throat> he's actually on this, this planet and he's roaming. Valerie. Somebody said to me one time, they were like, you mean millions of people are doing this wrong? They were asking me, and I was like, yes. How do you think that that's a narrow road if millions are doing it? Millions. Do I? Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Wait, what? I, I want to look at that really quick. Wait, sorry. I've got places saved here. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. I want to look at something really quick because I want you to see how narrow this is. And now <laughs> listen, we're going to the Fourth book of Esther, also known as the second book of Esther. And for those who are not familiar with this book, I want to tell you right up front that this book was removed from scriptures when? Oh, the 1611. 1600s to 1700s. Oh. It was in the. Boy, I'm going to find it. Um, Page 1405. Mine is different from yours, I think. Oh. Well, maybe not. Yours is a newer one, 1405? Ish. It's seven, six through eight. Ah, you got it. Okay, <clears throat> Four, I'm on 1413. Oh. Listen to this, guys. And this is in chapter seven of the fourth or second book of Ezra. It's known by both. There is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. And the entrance thereof is narrow. And it is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as there is a fire on the right and on the left, deep water. And there is but one path between. Even between the fire and the water. So small that there could be but one man go there at, at a time. This is how small the path for the remnant is. You think there's going to be a multitude going into the kingdom. You are so wrong. So what did you say? They said, what are you saying that? Millions, millions are wrong? Yeah. Uh, let's see. How many, how many hundreds of thousands came out of Egypt? 603,000. How many of those 603,000 walked across the, the Jordan that were 20 years old and older? Two. Two. Two, use that ratio of the millions that are on the earth. And let's see how many are going to walk that path, because that's very representative of what we're going to see today. And they were with Yah. They walked through the wilderness with Yah leading them, leading them, watching all of his miracles, being fed by the manna that fell from the heavens, being watered by the rock himself. The rock that followed them. That's what they were watered with. I mean, Moses didn't make it to the... Right. Even Moshe didn't make it. He didn't make it, but he, he will be... Yes. The kingdom now. Yes. But, and you will see that... that Pete, thank you for bringing it up. That is his payment. Because for him who has given much, 
Much is expected. And for Moshe, he had been given such honor. Though he was the most humble of all men. Josh tells us that. Of all the men on the whole earth, he was the most humble. So it didn't go to his head. But he was angry at these grumblers and these stiff-necked people. And what did he do to the rock? He struck it. Whack, whack that rock. I mean, he, the, he was supposed to speak to it. The Israelites that were walking going to the promised land, even when they came out of Egypt, is the same as today as the Americans. You know, we're never satisfied. Uh -uh. Never. We wow. always want more and more and more. You're right. We're, we're most blessed in the third world countries, past the arm blessed, and we're still not satisfied and happy. That's Most right. people don't know that, Pete. You've been you've been to third world, world countries. I have too. But I mean, it goes to this. That's why the reality show is so prominent in America. Because we're so bored with all that. It's all these rioting and taking place of what you, know, <coughs> we, you gotta do this, you gotta do this, because we got so much time for argument. I don't can. You're bored. You Come to my know. ranch. They won't be bored, okay? <laughs> huh? Come out there. We'll do some sheep and some goats and some chickens and you, they, we'll they do. Today. Well, I, I got a whole list, right, Grant? But that's what he. That's what he won't come see me anymore. <laughs> that's why. That's why the seven day rest is so important. It is. It's beautiful. I cannot wait till the sun sets on Friday me, evening. Me. I'm like, <sighs> it's like. Come off. On Friday's yeah, I got a message from Ballerina that said, guess what? Tonight there won't be a party. It won't. <laughs> We're almost there. <laughs> come, sun, come sunset. Sundown is coming. It's yes. good. Everything's good and everything just rolls off. And isn't it, 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 it amazing how on Shabbat, we don't think about the world. Today's 9-11. Are we worried? Uh, Have we stressed is, over it? Oh, look, he went. I didn't realize <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it is not 11. But guys, I want to I want to read you one more thing. <clears throat> uh, so Ezra was very, very, very concerned because so many people, so many millions, as Valerie was putting it, so many millions weren't going to make this path, this narrow path. And this is what Yah told him. He said, he answered and he said, this present life is not the end where much glory abides. Therefore, have they prayed for the weak. Wait, wait, wait. That's not it. Here it is. Then answered he me and said, Some things have you spoken aright, and according to your words it shall be. For indeed, this is Yah, I will not think on the disposition of them who have sinned before death, before judgment, before destruction, but I will rejoice over the disposition of the righteous. Dennis, what's the meaning of righteousness? Oh, to guard all the commands before Yahweh Elohim is he commanded us. Oh, wow. So he's looking at the ones who have been righteous. He is rejoicing over the disposition of those who have guarded and done his commandments, his right rulings, and his statutes. And he said, and I will remember also their pilgrimage. Huh, and I like this. And the Yahusha, the Yahua, the Yeshua. He says, and the Yeshua, the salvation and the reward that they have. He's going to be so busy rejoicing over those who have chosen to be obedient. He's not worried about those. Listen, it's his desire that no one perish. Not one. But we get the freedom to choose. So once we have chosen, he said, I'm going to be so busy rejoicing over that remnant that's coming through that one person path that I'm not even going to concern myself with those who are being cast into the fire. Wake up. The verse that woke me up was the one Peter said, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where shall the wicked sinner appear? And That's I was right. like, wait, the righteous are scarcely saved? Where does this once saved, always saved, fit into that sentence? And then I saw that it was also in another scripture from the Old Testament. I was like, wait, there's something. That was the verse that hit me. It made me go, wait a minute, I need to change something. Because yeah, and what, what Grant read earlier about stay in me and I will stay in you, it means stay in the Word, and the Word's going to stay in you. Stay in Yahusha, and He's going to stay in you. Stay. Don't turn around and walk off. You turn around and walk off. Listen, first of all, there's no armor on your backside, is there? No. We don't have any armor covering our back. Enemy's going to get you. 
He's probably already got you if you've turned and walked away, right? So we, we have basically gone through the whole book of, of Hosea or the whole chapter of Hosea. And guys, listen, I, I want to read a few more verses out of here. See, we you had First Peter. I want us to read Isaiah 8, 14. Who's got that? Okay, Bethany, come. Thank you, Leanne. Great job. And we've got 2 Samuel is coming up next, and that is going to be... Uh, huh? Val, Val, little Val's got um, Psalms. But I want you to come up here and read uh, 2 Samuel with me. Okay. Isaiah 8, isn't it? 11? 8, 11 through 16. Is everyone there? No. Isaiah 8, 11. Y'all said it only like 50 times. Page 420. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. For Yahuwah spoke thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying... Do not say a conspiracy concerning all that this people call a conspiracy, nor be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. Yahuwah of hosts, him you shall set apart. <coughs> let him be your fear and let him be your dread. Hold on a second. Guys, listen. What are they trying to do to us today? Oh, I'm scared I'm going to catch COVID. Oh, I can't go to the store. I can't walk down the street. I can't. I'm, I'm looking here at Pete. Fearful. Pete has Fearful. no immune system are you fearful no listen trust in Yah, and he's going to protect you what, what is what is Yah telling them here do not be afraid of their threats don't be afraid of their viruses don't be afraid of their lies don't be afraid of them listen there's one that we should be afraid of in 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 a fear of his awesomeness and that is Yahweh well, fear in both ways. Yes. Yeah, and what he can do to our body yeah. and soul. Because yeah. yeah. he one that can kill, kill both. Yeah. yeah. Hasatan can kill your body, <laughs> but Yahweh can kill both the body and the soul. <laughs> See, but you get control of your wife back there. <laughs> <laughs> you were gone. I'm kidding. <laughs> Are you winking again? She's yeah. winking at me. Okay. And he shall be for a set-apart place, but a stone of stumbling and a rock. Wait, wait, wait. Start at 13. Oh. Yahuwah of hosts, him you shall set apart. Let him be your fear and let him be your dread. And you shall be for a set-apart place, but a stone of stumbling and a rock that makes for falling to both the houses of Israel as a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and snared and taken. Bind up the witness, seal the Torah among my taught ones. Who are his taught ones? Those ones, those, those who choose to be Israel. Those who, those who choose to be Israel and guard and do his commands. So many from the house of Israel are going to fall and just be broken. They're going to stumble and fall on what? Uh, listen, the house of Israel, the United States, Ephraim, they're going to fall and stumble over what? The Torah. Yeah, because they don't know it. They, they don't, they're not under that law. Yes, ma'am. You know, there was a point where Yoshua was teaching, and a lot of them went away because what he was saying was hard to understand. Eat my body. Yeah. Drink my blood. It was just hard, and they, they stumbled over what he said. <coughs> well, and I'll, you know what? That is a very good point. He... There's also a place in there where the Pharisees, where some of the people said they believed, but they didn't want to be cast out of their congregation. <laughs> Just like the one that had many riches, and he said, give away all your possessions and follow me, and he went away sad because... He wasn't going to give it up. Right. And well, he, he had a lot of possessions. You to, a rich man to enter through the... Eye of a needle. Yeah. Which is really it's all about sacrifice though. I mean, it's, it's easier for a camel to enter through the yeah. eye of a needle so uh, the camel is also rope gimel gimel is, stands for a camel it can also be a rope so to get a rope through the eye of a needle what are you gonna have to do take it, take it apart you have to break it down 
get rid of some of it. Wow, cast off all the, you only need one thread to go through it. Cast the rest away. Or you can thread it all through. It's gonna mm -hmm. take a while. It's gonna take a while to get that gimbal, oh, that rope the, through. On the camel, because when the camel come in, it's just loaded. Now if you unload the camel, it knows to get it to the doorway. Good point. So yeah. it can be camel or rope. That's where it works in the, in the Jewish school. And Maybe if it was a rich man yeah. on a camel, He's going to have much possessions. Poor camel. I know, poor, poor beast of burden. Well, I mean, when it has Yahweh host, what, what does that mean? It's a Yahweh host. The Yah it's the, the Elohim of the army. He's the host of the army, the host of all the army. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Okay, come up here, Val. Valerie. She didn't have one. Which one? Do you, I need to bring my book? Well, you're the only Valerie we have here today. Yeah. Yes, bring, <laughs> bring your book. <laughs> we're going into 2 Samuel, and we're going to hit two. And Valerie, I want you to pull up 2 Samuel 21 through 33. I'm going to read two, one through seven, and um, then I'll hit uh, 47. So two, one through seven right. in Second Samuel. Samuel. And th these are, this is King David. And it came to be afterwards that David inquired of Yahweh saying, do I go up to any of the cities of Yahweh? Am I in the right place? Do I go up to any of the cities of Yehuda? And Yahweh said to him, go up. And David said, where should, I, where should I go up? And Yahweh said to Hebron, I don't think I'm in the right place. That's it. I mean, well, that's <laughs> second Samuel. I know, but I think it's I wrote not, the wrong verse down. You read the second one, though. Is it supposed to be 20, 1 through 7? Because I know we did 20. 20. It was 20. And 20. Maybe it's 22. 22, that's what it was. I have to watch me. I'm partially dyslexic. I'll write a number on the calendar. 22 wouldn't matter, but 23 would be 32. Yeah, that's what we read last Okay, here we go. This is the right verse. 22. Sorry, live streamers. It is 2 Samuel 22. We knew that wasn't what I was going to be reading. Then David said to Yahweh the words of this song on the day when Yahweh had delivered him from the hand of his enemies and from the hand of Shaul. So listen, we're going to be reading in a little bit the song of Moshe. This is the song of, of David. And he said, Yahweh is my rock and my stronghold and my deliverer. My Elohim is my rock and I take refuge in him. King David knew who his rock was. <coughs> it's his savior. Listen, I mean, just listen to his words. And who is King David? David, who is he? He's a man after God's own heart. Yah's own heart. That's special, isn't it? Yes. <clears throat> my shield and the horn of my deliverance, my high tower and my refuge, my savior, you save me from violence. I call on Yahweh, the one to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. For the waves of death surround me. Floods of Baal made me afraid, and the cords of Sheol were all around me. The snares of death were before me in my distress, and I called upon Yahweh, and to my Elohim I cried. And from his heckle, he heard my voice, and my cry was in his ears. So King David is telling us exactly who that rock is. <laughs> okay, 21 through 33 of this same chapter. And guys, listen to this, because what Val seems to be reading, this is beautiful. Yahweh rewarded me according to my righteousness. What? He rewarded me according to my righteousness. So you have your own righteousness? That's what the book says. And Dennis is over there behind the wall, and he said, going back to Deuteronomy 6.25. So if you've got your own righteousness, if you're guarding and you're doing the commandments, you're telling me here that Yahweh is going to reward you for this? That's important, isn't it? <clears throat> okay, keep going. According to the clean, clean, cleanness of my hands, he repaid me. For I have guarded the ways of Yahweh. There it is. Mm. Okay. 
and have not acted wrongly against my Elohim, for all his right rulings are before me. As for his laws, I do not turn from them, and I am perfect before him, and I guard myself from my crookedness. And Yahweh repays me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness before his eyes. With the lovingly committed ones, you show yourself lovingly committed. With the perfect one, you show yourself perfect. With the clean, you show yourself clean. And with the crooked, you show yourself twisted. For you save the humble people, but your eyes are on the haughty to bring them low. For you are my lamp, O Yahweh, and Yahweh makes my darkness light. What, what verse does that remind you of? He is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalms 119, 142. He is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Guys, he is the Torah that lights our path to where? Guys, look look how this shot all falls into place. It lights our path to where? To the kingdom gate where we meet our Savior, Yahusha. And we don't get in there unless he thinks we look like him and we walk like him like We've got to look like little Yahushas. <laughs> like Missy said, if you're a duck, you walk like a duck, you quack like a duck, you smell like a duck. They don't really smell so good. Ducks. I see the picture of the mama duck and the babies following behind. You know how they all waddle the same yes. way? Like, they're almost on the same. Yes. And so it's, it's a beautiful picture, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. Yahusha is supposed to be leading us, and we should be walking like him, talking like him, quacking like him. We, when we get to the gate, guys, we should look. We should resemble him. And he's going to know us. He's going he's gonna to be like, I know you. You're one of mine. Because you look like me and you walk like me and you talk like me. Come on in. Because he, listen, if you don't get there and you don't have the testimony of, of Yusha, you're not getting through the gate. No matter how much righteousness you have, you're not going through that gate. Okay. And the last verse that we are going to hit is 47. In 22. Yahweh lives, and blessed is my rock. Listen to this. Yahweh lives, and blessed is my rock. And exalted is my Elohim, the rock of my deliverance, the El who avenges me in bringing peoples down under me. Listen, you, you, want, you want to say King David didn't know who his rock was, who his Savior was, who his deliverer was? The rock of my deliverance. He is the rock. Listen, he's the rock of all of our deliverance. And guess what? Isn't that beautiful? But guess what? Now we get to finally go into the Torah portion. We may have to stop and eat a little bit early. What time is it really? 2.30. 2 30? We're going to go. We're going to. was in there. They spent a lot of time with Elohim. He was out there guarding sheep. Yes. So that's why, that's why he was so strong. He didn't notice he became a king. He, he, he still he relied on him. He was, but his obedience started to fail. It's just that he was not <coughs> devoted so much of his time to as he was to be out there with him and the sheep. Listen, yeah. when it was just him and, and Yah and the sheep, he fought lions, bears, wolves. And he was just a little bitty boy. Because why? Yes, he didn't believe that he was his son. And we have to go back to the Mishnah to see the full story of why. Uh, yes, he didn't believe he was his son. And one day we'll get into that. But we surely don't have time today. You want to step here with me for a little while? Sure. Until, um, because we'll, we'll, we will go for a while in Deuteronomy 31 before we have verses to read. One thing I thought about was when I was reading this about David was that the... Uh, I remember reading the Psalms and stuff when I would go to church or whatever people would say them. But I, I feel like I never saw the ones where he was talking so much about his words and his right rulings. And But a man that was after his own heart, who was living according to these things, still had to suffer. Yes. He still went through sufferings. He still cried out. So when we get this idea that because we he live this way, too, everything, yes, he did. That was probably reaping what he I sowed. Know. But... We can look at those songs and realize that when we came in, we were like, this has been a, this has been a week. This has been a hard week. So uh -huh. even us doing what we're supposed to do, we're still going to have things that we have to deal with. And but we have his delight, though, even in the midst of the turmoil that he was suffering, he was still praising him, yes. crying out to him, thanking him. And that reminds you of Paul yes. when he was in the, the prison. That's why he was still praising. That's it. Yes. 
doesn't listen. It doesn't matter what storms are going on, on around us. We should still be praising Him and thanking Him. Look where we are, guys. We we still today get to come together. In fact, there are months we need to stop and pray right now and just thank Him that we have this blessed hope that Jose is telling us about. He's going to restore us and He's going to bring us back home. And we need to thank Him for that. We need to praise Him. We just need to turn the study over to Him because. This goes so much deeper than we're even capable of going, doesn't it? Oi. Doesn't that word mean salvation? Deliverance? Hosea. Hosea. Yeah, when I looked it up. Oh. Because when you know in in the Torah portion when he calls Joshua that, yes. I wanted to find out where that came from or what he was saying. And um that's what that so I mean, what, I know what does Hosea mean? It means salvation. Salvation. It, other, wow. Minus the Yod, it is exactly like Yahusha's name. Just right. it has a yoni in. Huh? Huh? Does have right hand? That may be the yod that comes on. The no, yod. The yod the, is the hand. Yahushua is the salvation. Right. Well, it. I mean, when you look it up, it is the, it the name is the serious. exact same in Hebrew, but it has the yod before the Hosha. So Yah Hosha. It, it's. It would be. I know. I mean, I didn't study of it too, but I, I can't <laughs> agree with you because it's the son. Yahushua is the salvation of the people. Right. Now, Joshua is. Somewhere. Well, I was gonna say it's the root word, just yeah. by itself is the same in Hebrew for Hosea, Hosea. Yeah, the 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 word in Hebrew is the almost exact same as Yahushua. I'm not saying that this guy means that. I'm saying that even when Joshua went into the Promised Land, I wonder if that's why he was using a word like that, not his actual name, but the word close to it, because he was the one taking them in the Promised Land. He did have the same change. A new a new way. He changed yeah, he it. Yeah. Moshe changed his name. Yeah, yeah so, I wasn't meaning like the book of Hosea, but the name that he no, gives, yeah. Joshua, Just changed. Just keep in mind, people online, you know, they don't have that. Right. They didn't have to study like that, so, you know, you got to make be clear. Yeah. That's the salvation of these people. Right. Son. Yeah. 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 Yeah
so many things that we forget to ask you to do. And you do it anyway. Because you just love your children. And you love us loving you. So, Father, we're just turning over the rest of this Torah portion today. And even the one at the beginning, Father. We pray that ears are open, eyes are open. And, Father, that hearts are changed by your words, by your Torah, by your teachings. And, Father, use us as a clay vessel. Fill us up and pour us out as you will. It's all about you, Father. All about you. We praise you this day in the precious, precious name of our Savior and our soon coming King, Yahushua HaMashiach. We pray these things. Amen. Amen. And amen. Okay. Are y'all ready to get into Deuteronomy? Now you want to start reading? 31. 31.1. Yeah, all of us. And Moshe went and spoke these words to all Israel. And he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I am no longer able to go out and come in. And Yahweh has said to me, you do not pass over this Jordan. Yahweh your Elohim himself is passing over before you. He shall destroy these nations from before you, and you possess, possess them. Yehoshua himself is passing over before you, as Yahweh has spoken. And Yahweh shall do to them as he did to Sion and to all <coughs> the sovereigns of the Amorites in their land. When he destroyed them. Hold on just a second. Let's look at that. So when he destroyed Sihon and Og, who were they? I'm going to tell you something. The enemy always <coughs> comes and creates giants for us to overcome. Dad. Always. Who's got numbers? Dennis, you've got numbers and Yasher. See ya. Adios. <laughs> numbers and Yasher. I have Yasher. Oh, you got Yasher? I don't know which way you are. You do have Yasher. Wow. <clears throat> You're sitting down like an old man. Now. I feel like an old man. You look like a 120 year old man, like Moshe. My quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <coughs> numbers 21, 21 through 35. <coughs> and Israel sent messengers, messengers to Sion, sovereign of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through your land. We shall not turn off into fields or vineyards. We shall not drink water from wells, but go by the sovereign's highway until we have passed over your border. But Sion would not allow Israel to pass through his border. So Sion gathered all his people together and went out against Israel in the wilderness. And he came to Yahat and fought against Israel. Mm -hmm. And Israel struck him with the edge of the sword and took possession of his land from the Arnon to the Yabbok as far as the children of Ammon. For the border of the children of Ammon was strong. <coughs> Thirty-five. Oh. And Israel took all these cities, and Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites, in Heshbon and in all its villages. For Heshbon was the city of Sion, the, the sovereign of the Amorites, who had fought against the former sovereign of Moab, and had taken all his land from, the, from his hand as far as the Arnon. That is why those who speak in Proverbs say, Come to Hezbon, let the city of Sion be built and established. For fire went out from Hezbon, the flame from the city of Sion, and consumed all of Moab, the masters of the heights of the Arnon. Woe to you, Moab, you have perished, O people of Timosh. He has given his sons as fugitives and his daughters into captivity to Sion, to Sion, the sovereign of the Amorites. Then we shot them. Heshbon has perished as far as Debon, and we laid waste as far as Nophab, which reaches to Mediba. Mediba. So Israel dwelt in the land of the Amorites, and they sent to spy out Yazir, 
and they took its villages and drove out the Amorites who were there and turned and went up by the way to Bashan. And Og, sovereign of Bashan, went out against them, he and all his people, to battle a drill. A drill. A drill. A drill. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Do not fear him, for I have given him into your hand with all his people in his land. And, and you shall do to him as you did to Sion, sovereign of the Amorites who dwelt at Eshbon. <coughs> they struck him and his sons and all his people until no remnant was left of him, and they took possession of his land. So, guys, look, they were giants. Amen. The Amorites were giants. No. And so the enemy always comes, and it always looks like way bigger. Did they have trouble beating them? No, because y'all went before them in the battle, didn't he? And I was going to get Val to read the, the exact same story from Yasher, but... <clears throat> it was just like going out to spy we, the land we, with, the, with the 12 or 10 yes. spies. And but, he was making sure that they didn't get you know, scared. And right. Looking at it through their eyes, oh, they're giants. We can't, you know, conquer them. They'll eat us, you know. Yes. We're like grasshoppers. <laughs> them, but those two that follow God completely... He said, oh, no, man, you know, God's before us, you know. They knew that he could defeat these giants. Mm -hmm. When Yah goes before us, we... We can always win. We give them this land. We give them this land. Okay, they, and we're, we're, no, we're not going to read the Yasher, but listen, if you want to read the story, and it, it there is a little bit of difference in it, but that would be in uh, the book of Yasher, 85, verse 13 through 37. So it's a pretty long read, but it's good. Everything in Yasher is good. And so, Addie, we're going to get to you in just a second. <clears throat> okay. Verse 3, 5, excuse me. And Yahweh shall give them over to you, and you shall do to them according to all the command which I have commanded you. And I want you to listen to this, because he repeats this three times. And we <coughs> need to remember this, guys. We need to be reminded. Uh, Yasher is 85. Chapter 85, verse 13 through 37. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> be strong and courageous and do not fear nor be afraid of them. Guys, what does fear do? Fear breaks your immune system down. Oh, it breaks your immune system down. It can it, kill you if you live. It can kill you if you live in fear constantly because it breaks your immune system down. It was it takes years off your life at my age who can who can afford that i don't be fearful what else can it do first of all it's contagious huh it will take years off your life even at 30 but no the fear of man fear of man fear of man well we're talking about he he said um he said, be strong and do not fear nor be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of what man can do to you. Do not fear them. Well, and I'm going to tell you. flesh and not the spirit. And look at, look at what can happen with someone posting something on the internet today. It can spread like wildfire, can it? And it starts little and it grows big and suddenly everybody wants to what run and hide it's like sin no there's a time to run and hide but this ain't it no. right do what that's i wouldn't call that fear mongering i would call that like a toilet paper wonderful paper. yes toilet paper, uh, i mean that just, it just shows you how fear and being ignorant work together. And I may have started that one because I told everyone in the shop, I was like, go buy toilet paper because this is going oh, to be, this is going to be a pandemic. We did that in January, didn't we? Gave away toilet paper. Yeah, I was like, go buy toilet paper. Then but we then, bought toilet paper and then we gave them to people who couldn't buy toilet paper. But it referred to the other people just buying Yes. Oh well, I told them the to fear, do that too. <laughs> well, the fear, you won't have any toilet paper. But the fear of everybody going, you see, you know, two or three people in the family are buying 
a packed, too packed for what? You know? Well, we don't want none of that stuff. That, we don't yeah. want none of that stuff in our... But that's a compared to compliance with man. Yeah, yes. it spreads. It like, spreads. It's, it's don't be afraid because y'all's going to take care of it. Listen, did they plate. have piles and piles of toilet paper 3,500 years ago? No, they had a shovel. And a hand. I'm just being honest. Left hand. Yeah, they had leaves. In the desert, few and far between. Listen, if you're vying with a million other people to find those ways, you're like, I've got to leave. That that just went to a whole We're different level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Listen, okay, so how big was the camp? When like twenty one or twenty three square miles to get to the outskirts of the camp to even take care of business? I'd be like, you know, well, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Look, Valerie went, I've got to go get toilet paper. She just came back with toilet paper. <laughs> Joshua, Abby, let's read Joshua 1, 1 through 9. Who said that? Was that her mother? <laughs> it came to be after the death of Moshe, the servant of Yahweh, that Yahweh spoke to Yehoshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moshe, saying, Moshe, my servant is dead. Now arise, pass over the Yarden, you and all the, this people to the land which I am giving to them, to the children of Israel. Wait, hold on. I'm going to ask a question. Who's he been talking to and who has he given this land to? Who has he been talking to this whole time? Sure, the children of Israel. Do you see anything in there about the tribe of Judah? So why in the world would people go, what are you, a Jew? If when, when they find out that you're observing his Torah. They don't because have anything to do. They don't know. They're ignorant to what, what's real. I mean, that's straight up. Oh. I'd rather be ignorant than stupid. When I started this walk, I was helping a lady clean her house and she, her husband said, are you a stain right yeah. now? Like a what? A, a sign. Like uh, a, a, a stain. You know, like being a stain. Or oh. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Guys, listen. If they persecute you, it's okay. They don't know. Because your rewards are in heaven. It's like what he said, they're going to hate you because... Listen, oh, Yahu Yahusha boy. said that. They hated him. Yahusha said that. He said, they're going to hate you because they hated me first. They hated me for no reason. They hated him for no reason. They're going to hate you for no reason. They're not going to want to know truth. And they're not going to want to know that the Torah is still and alive and well. About Christianity, when he said, me. they're going to hate me. They're going to hate you behind my name. You know, he's saying, my name is going to hate you because of my, what I came to tell y'all what to do. Wow, yes. You know, Ooh. They don't understand that aspect. He says, by my That name. is so true. But if you got all this Christianity saying, oh, love, love, you know, Jesus, and, uh, <coughs> they're wrong. That didn't even sound like coming from you, okay? But that's not, <laughs> you have to see it's not, if they're not hating you, that means you're doing something that Elohim's not telling you what to do. You know what I mean? When they start, like, you know, tell them about the, like I told you one time we were at Bible study in Palestine. And then about seven, eight of them, they're persecuting me because I told them about the Sabbath. They were upset. That's the reference when he says they're going to hate you for my name. But they're not going to agree with you because the Messiah comes into any church on this earth today. They're going to kick them right out. Yeah, well, if you come around someone's delusion bubble with a sharp sword, you know, oh, yeah. it, they don't want it to They don't want to hear truth <laughs> because it rubs up against what they believe. We were all believe. the same way, though. We yes, were the yes. same way. I, I was willing to fight for what I believed. But y'all want to who is lukewarm, we look <laughs> radical. And that's sad because this is the way it's supposed to be. But I read that one day and I was like, it's so true. Because they're like, oh, that's just too much. Or that's, I'm just like, no one everything. Can, look, no one can do that. No one can do that law. Oh, my goodness. This law frees me. Uh, uh, was it last week? Someone in here, we were talking about the tradition of Christmas. Free from that tradition, I love the winter season. 
it is so joyful and pleasant and we get to enjoy the pretty lights and stuff yes. and we're not out shopping yeah. yes. nor decorating our house it's beautiful in that season but it's also hurtful because you're not going to spend with your family you, know, you're, yeah. you get accustomed to that yeah you know you miss your family and I, I, I had to tell my family and I, you know i'm not going to sit here and i don't miss hanging out with y'all yes but i'm not going to hang on <clears throat> hang out with you on these pagan days. So and you can't it. go over there on that pagan day because they're usually serving ham and they're singing their, you know, holly jolly, let's sing to, uh, what? Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. Santa Claus. Santa Claus, thank you, Grant, from the mouth of a babe. But it's the, uh, <coughs> I'll get back to you, remember? <laughs> he just had a senior moment. I did. Okay. Keep going, Addie. You're doing wonderful. We're in verse 3. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given to you, as I spoke to Moshe, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as, as even as far as the great river, the river your plates, all the land of the Hittites and the great sea towards Toward the going down of the sun is your border. No man is going to stand before you all the days of your life. Mm. As I with Moshe, so I am with you. I do not fall you, fail you, or forsake you. We need to remember that, guys. What Addie just told us, he's not going to fail you, and he's not going to forsake you. If what? If you obey the Lord. If you're obeying and walking out his commandments. He's not going to forsake you. If you're obeying and walking out his commandments, every place that the sole of your foot hits, treads, it, it will become yours. You can claim it for his kingdom. I just remembered what you just said a while ago. You know, we, we all get offensive in what we want to support, what we believe is true, when in fact we all should have an open mind, open heart mm -hmm. to see what they're saying is true and go investigate. See for Listen, guys, we don't need to live in offendedness. I mean, those sort of if you, if you're offensive by what others are doing, it's because you got a problem, okay? It's a problem that's still in you. We have to let other people, you got to make your choices. I'm looking at everyone in this room. Everyone in this room had the freedom to make that choice. And you have to allow them that freedom because, look, if it's, if they're choosing because they're afraid of what you think, not going to work. We've got to allow people to walk it out. And we can't judge them, and we can't be ugly to them. If they're willing to have an open mind and open heart with it, you know, speak to them about it. But they get offensive or offensive with it, just leave it with that. I have a family member that I can't speak of oh, my whole family. any of this with. I mean, nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I used to have a minute this is me. Smile go about your way. A minute or two, I'll be able to speak. But I don't have anything that, if you don't have, if you can't speak of, if I can't speak about y'all and the things he's doing in my life and the miracles he's performing and what's coming, listen, I can't talk. I've got nothing else to say. There's, that's what I'm all, all about. We've got business and we've got y'all. That's what I'm all about. And if I can't talk to you about politics and y'all, I can sit there and smile. <laughs> Where they want me in the corner, <laughs> but but I know not with my nose in the corner. I'm like doing the chair sets in the corner. <laughs> I I can't get that out of my head. That's just cruel and inhumane. So uh, <laughs> you want to see it? Huh? You want to see it? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> That's a window. You'll fall. <laughs> She'll be like, ah. <laughs> I do want to see it shortly though. I'm kidding. <laughs> Okay, Addie, I'm sorry. We just got you, so... Okay, keep going, baby. You're doing so good. Be strong and courageous, for you are to let this people inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous to guard to do according to all the Torah which Moshe, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it right or left, so that you act wisely wherever you go. Do not let this book of the Torah depart from your mouth, and you shall... Meditate on a day and night, so that you guard to do according to all that is written in it. <coughs> For then you shall make your way prosperous and act wisely. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor be discouraged. For Yahweh your Elohim is with you wherever you go. 
Guys, did you hear what Addie just read? Okay, so how many times did he tell him to be strong and courageous? Three times? In just this verse? Okay, look at uh, verse 7. He said, okay, again, only be strong and very courageous. He's saying not just strong, but very courageous. <clears throat> um, to guard, to do according to all of the Torah, which Moshe, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it right or left so that you act what? Wisely. Wisely. So if you're not following Torah, what are you acting? Like a fool. Foolishly. Foolishly. Oh. I, I, you know, I don't like that sound, but Yah uses that. Stupid. My stupid children. My children are stupid. My people die for lack of knowledge. That's what he tells us. My people are dying for lack of knowledge. Of what? Of the Torah. Of the rules. Of everything that he told us to do. To what? To live a long, prosperous life. And by prosperous, it doesn't mean your rooms are overflowing with gold and silver. Not like Joel's thing. Not like, <laughs> yeah, we don't have a gold, does it have a gold globe behind him? And the willow, we had a jet, couple of jet planes. faster. <laughs> Sorry. What was that? There's a little thing. Over and faster. That's what you're talking about. Oh, so you're a mm-hmm. No, the girls used to watch it. I used to hear it all the time. I'd be like, that, I'll show you later. Come here. Even my husband down. said, you know, his 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 sermons are always upbeat. I said, yeah, do you notice that he never cracks the Bible open? He doesn't, he's not. I had a friend speak about, you know, we're talking about Joel but Joel is a good pastor. No, Joel is a good inspirational speaker. He's an inspirational speaker, and, and it leads to nothing. Yeah, and he's like, you know. Don't you know, forget to send me your money. Good. Yeah, he don't go by the Bible. Uh-uh. There's nothing biblical about what he's saying. And listen, why, you need to, he needs to change his title to inspirational speaker, and Vicky could, his wife, Victoria, needs to do the same thing. Joel They're inspirational. The Bible just like Satan does the Bible. You're right. Oh, my. And and you know what's crazy is his brother-in-law is Gary Simons, and he has Trump and true, and he is Torah observant. He yes. is Torah observant. He had a mega church in in Dallas. I think it was I, I don't remember how many thousands, but it was thousands of people that were there. <clears throat> Walked away from it. From what I understand, and I may be wrong, and this is only what I think I remember, but I think he went to Israel, and when he came back, he was a changed man. Yeah, and going, he said, he said going to the, the physical land, done something to It will change you. I, I wept. When our, when our plane wheels touched the ground, I wept. I felt like I was back home. And, of course, that is the physical land, but it was the fact that, you know what? My Savior walked these grounds. He walked there? on this ground. Yes. Everything, but okay. <clears throat> so I just wanted to. Oh, so it brings us wisdom. Following his Torah brings us wisdom. Okay, we are back over here in 31, and we are only in verse 7, and it is 302. And I said, Listen, we're gonna go, um, I'm not gonna stop anymore. We're gonna, we're gonna go to about verse 12, okay. <clears throat> Stop it. And Moshe called Yahushua and said to him before the eyes of all Israel, 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 not Yehuda, be strong and courageous. There he goes. For you are going with this people to the land which, I, which Yahweh has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you are to let them inherit it. And it is Yahweh who is going before you. He himself is with you. He does not fail you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be discouraged. And you know what's so neat about all this? The verses that Addie read out of Yahushua, the very first chapter, the first thing that Yahushua repeats is exactly what Moshe has told them. Him, be strong and very courageous. Yah is going before us. In everything that we do, he's going before us. Yahushua repeated exactly verbatim what, what Moshe had told him. 
And Moshe wrote the Torah, wrote this Torah, and gave it to the priest and the sons of Levi, who bore the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh, and to all the elders of Israel. And Moshe commanded them, saying, At the end of seven years, at the appointed time, the year of release, at the festival of Sukkot. What is the year of release every seven years? Shemitah. And we're coming up to the Shemitah in the seventh month. In the seventh month, we will have Shemitah. The year of release will begin. <clears throat> so I think we just answered a question that I had earlier. So the Shemitah, let's look at this really quick. Um, we've got, look, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to read just these verses. Luke. <laughs> Four, seventeen through twenty-one. Oh, is that Pete? No, it's James. The the Come up here, James. <laughs> that was so cold. Well, what? Nobody wants to come. Luke. We are in Luke <clears throat> set four, seventeen through twenty-one. I noticed that he dragged his chair away from me. <laughs> <laughs> And the scroll of the prophet Yeshua was handed to him, and having unrolled the scroll, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of Yahweh is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring the good news to, to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim the release of the captives and recovery of the sight of the blind, and to send away the cursed wounds with a release. Wow. To proclaim the... the Acceptable, acceptable year to Yahweh. Hold having, on a second. Okay. So what you've already read there, look look what he's done. He's Yahusha himself, and I want to go back up here. In verse 16, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and according to his practice, he went into the congregation on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. As he was accustomed okay this is where, where he, he spent every shabbat it was his normal practice to go into the congregation so was he honoring shabbat mm -hmm. he was he was the honoring before <coughs> uh the roman catholic come in and change the sabbath they were already starting to try to change it though they actually were but he Listen to what, what James said. He said, The Spirit of Yahweh is upon me because he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. We're the blind. Listen, most of America is a blind. They can't see, they can't hear. To send away crushed ones with a release. It's the year of the release. And the big mega year of release, which this could have been, it's what? The year of Jubilee. Jubilee. Every seven, seven years is the year of Jubilee, which was the major release. <clears throat> okay, keep going. And having rolled up the scroll, he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the congregations were fixed upon him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been filled in your eyes, in your hearing. Wow. So today... Well, I just read to you, which came from where? Yeshayahu, 61, 1 through 2. Isaiah, 61, 1 through 2. Everything I just read to you, Yahushua Yeshua said, everything I read to you today, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So we could calculate from this point, I wonder? If this, okay, but here's the problem. What year was this? This You're was, supposed to know. This was the yeah. it, uh, more than likely. This was the year of jubilee, more yeah. than likely. But if it was just the seven-year release, and not the, the year of jubilee, the yeah, it could be the the, the shemitah. But the year of jubilee is what many of the pastors say. This is the year he's coming back. Then is it? Because this is the shemitah year. We'll have another shemitah in seven more years. Because the first year of the next group is the Shemitah year. Does okay. that make sense? So it would be a calculating point then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. What? Oh, I was like, okay, Bailey, Isaiah 61, 1 through 2, we want to see 
we wouldn't go back since we know that it was brought from Isaiah 61, 1 through 2. Come on, baby. Oh, she's all in a tizzy. <laughs> what did you say? I said all over. Hurry. Just smack a belly. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> huh. It's on page 462. 462, guys. Hi, Misty. 462, guys. And that's if you're in the what? Scriptures Bible. Thank you. Very good. We're there. The spirit of the master you hear is upon me. Because Yahuwah has anointed me to bring good news to the, to the meat. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captive. And he opened up the, and the, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to both. To proclaim the capable, acceptable, acceptable, acceptable you were close. year of Yahuwah and the day of vengeance of our Elohim to convert, convert all who mourn. That was so perfect. So this is like freedom. He's, he's declaring freedom here. And what do we see over in... Scripture, Yahushua reads this verse, the very verse that you just read. He stood up in the congregation and read it to the whole congregation. And then he sat down and he said, Today I tell you, this scripture has been fulfilled. Is that not amazing? You just read the same words that Yahushua read. That's cool. <laughs> Okay. Just step here with me. Uh, she does. She looks like him. Okay. So, in verse 12, assemble the people, the men and the women and the little ones, and your sojourner who is within your gates so that they hear and so they can learn to fear Yahweh your Elohim and guard to do all the words of this Torah. This does not say anything about Jews. It does not say anything about the tribe of Yehuda. It says, I said, well, all the people, the men, the women, the children, and your sojourners who are within your gates. This is everyone, guys. <coughs> okay, let's break. You want to break? I know, the live stream, I know it's a really odd spot to go and eat, but we've got food cooking. We have time. It's half time. <laughs> so we're starting in verse 13 when we come back. So, so guys, listen. We hit right off the, off the bat when we first started today the fact that if you're a backslider, if you're a backslider, what happens? Going back to your old way. You go down there, which means you're picked up by the messengers and tossed into the fire. And you just, what, burn up. So there's a lot of misunderstanding from a lot of people on the fact that they think that when you die after the judgment seat, that you're going to be punished forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ever, and ever. What? When you get burned up, it's I think when you're going to be hot and you're going to burn, that it's going to be over really quick. Because we serve a very loving father. And would anyone want to see their children suffer? No. And so our, our father is a, he's like the ultimate daddy. Like your dad, it doesn't matter who your dad you are. He doesn't want to see you suffer. Right? He wants only what's good for you because he loves you so much. Even if you try to hit you with all my heart. He's like, I still love her yes, with all mine. He was so cute. It's yeah. an unconditional love. And that's kind of love our father has. And just like your daddy. He doesn't want you to choose wrong. Right? And you don't. You choose very well. But our father doesn't want us to choose wrong either. He wants us to choose to guard, to do, and obey 
everything. Yeah. And if we don't, we just get burned out. We're not going to suffer forever, yeah. but there is that. suffering from the time that we die <laughs> until the judgment seat. And so, guys, that's one thing that, that most people don't understand. Is that, hey, guys, we're still live streaming. Is that once you die, there is there is a time period in which there, it can be a hellish for many people. It's going to be in, in uh, Ezra's, fourth, fourth book of Ezra's, yeah. chapter 7. But I, I highly recommend everyone really download good. that book. And uh, look at chapter 7, and please, when you download it, try to get the one that has 140-something verses in chapter 7, because that's the whole thing. There's several links you can look it up on, so you don't have to, like, download it, but it has Yahweh's name in it and stuff, so... So you can look it up. It will have the name of Yahweh in it. Uh, the the Sefer, I, I use uh, Dr. Stephen Hidgens at Sefer, and in this one, the book of Ezra is complete. And, guys, listen, once you die, depending on how you lived your life, listen, if you lived it toilessly and you did bad things, there's going to be some punishment. You're, you're going to be living through some bad times until the judgment seat. After the judgment seat, you'll just be cast into the fire and burned up. But until that point, it's not going to be pleasant. The good thing is, Peter tells us that a day, a thousand years is as a day in the kingdom, right? If you're righteous, you're escorted to a sleeping area, guarded. If you're righteous with belief in Messiah. <clears throat> that's that right. Thank you. In Messiah. And that, I mean, it's just not. That's a big difference. Those that were righteous, yeah. but righteous in the belief. That is Messiah. huge. So if you are righteous, and, it, and it's actually the two things, and you're, you can find them in Revelation 12 and in Re Revelation 14. In Revelation 12 and in 14, it, both places, it says, those who are obedient to the law of Moshe and have the testimony of Yahushua, the, the Messiah. The dragon didn't come to fight with the unrighteous. Huh? I said the dragon didn't come to fight with the unrighteous. He did not. He came to fight with the righteous, which are the set apart ones. So, <clears throat> the righteous in Yahushua, they are escorted to their sleeping chambers where they get to rest. Now, all the mechanics of it, I don't know. But I do know what, what Jah has disclosed to us in Estrus. And I do know that if you're a very bad person and you didn't repent, there's going to be some payment to be made after death, before the judgment seat. But the good thing is... it. If you're if you've been dead for a thousand years, it may be like a day. Yes. So those who died a thousand years ago, a day's gone by. Simple as that is is the way I see it. Day is From what? A thousand years and a thousand years is that's a day. So it's <coughs> Some of them call it a thousand of years. Well, and I hope it's not the, the reverse because. One day might feel like a thousand years. I've been doing this for a thousand years. Oh, no I've been sleeping. punished for a thousand years. Listen, someone who steals from everyone and just wants to covet everything that's around, he may go through a life of people coming and stealing all his stuff and him having to put up with it. And, and that's the type of repayment. What you did is going to be done to you. Think about that, guys. What you're doing could be done back to you. If you're If you're a mean, abusive person... You're probably going to be, somebody's going to be mean and abusive, probably Hasatan, or one of his minions is going to be mean and abusive to you. <coughs> but there's a payment for the things that we've done, and it will be between the time that you die, well, actually seven days after the time that you die, and the time of the judgment seat. You need to look at this, and you need to read it, because if you just stick in the scriptures, Catholic Church removed Ezra from... You're not going to be ready if you don't read it. <clears throat> Listen, you're gonna, if you sit and believe everything that's a, that, that you're going to go down here and you're going to be burned, it, nowhere in Scripture does it tell you you're going to suffer fire. However, I did see something, the eternal fire, uh, the other day, which leads me to go, well, wait a minute. But we don't serve a father that wants to punish his children. But guys, if you're a backslider, turn back to y'all today. Choose today to, to stop what you're doing. If you're 
cheating on your wife, if you're cheating, um, if you're lying, you're stealing, you're committing adultery in your mind even, if you're killing in your mind, if you get so mad that you, in your mind, you put someone to death, God's repent, because you're guilty of murder. I mean, it's that simple. If you've been mad enough to hurt somebody, you're guilty of hurting that person or murdering, murdering. and that's how we're going to be judged. So stop today. Repent to Shuva. Turn back to Yah. He doesn't and want us to perish. He, he wants doesn't. All to come to repentance. Yeah. Oh, that is so perish. true. That is His will. Is that all turn back to Him and are saved? What a joyful. Listen. What a joyful day it would be if everyone ends up in the kingdom. That would be that would be amazing, wouldn't it, Grant? But is it going to be factual? No. Because we already know there's a remnant. Look at look at how many are really wanting to study the word of Yah. It's a remnant. There's a remnant, and the rest of them are on that broad path. So, Seth, would you lead us in prayer to close out? And, guys, listen, we will be back in about 30 minutes to finish up our second part of the Torah portion. Oh, Father, thank you for today. Thank you for letting us gather together and be set apart. Um, sign between you and your people, Father. We love you and thank you for all that you're doing in our lives and just continue to work with us as we um, try to walk out your Torah to our best knowledge and our best ability. We do fall short every single day, Father, but it's all about, like Mickey said, it's all about turning back from our old ways and toward, turning towards you so that you can be the light and your history can be the light in our in our, uh, in our walk. So we love you and thank you for today. Let the food nourish our bodies and cleanse our souls in the precious name of your Son, you shall have a shake our bread and Amen. So we want to thank you for joining us during this uh, first part. And we're hoping that we can get through the second part because we still have a lot to go. Uh, but, but guys, listen, every week you should be reading your, the Torah portion for the week. You shouldn't be waiting until Sabbath. Everyone in here has already studied and read. This is why every year does it not change. And it gets we get deeper and it gets broader. <clears throat> don't wait for today to come in and go, okay, I'm going to learn what the Torah portion is. No, we should already be studying that. And when we finish the Torah portion in about two weeks, we're going to be starting on, on the, well, we're probably going to start with Joshua and just go through the, the Old Testament straight through. It's going to take us years. <laughs> but we will have a brief go over of the Torah portion the highlights of the Torah portion each week, and then we're going to go into the new books. So I'm looking forward to that because we've been doing this for a lot of years. And uh, But everyone, listen, we need to start posting it on our Way of Truth, and we've got to start doing all this through the Way of Truth. Okay. But Shabbat Shalom to everyone. We love you. Everybody's already run out except for us five. And so what we're going to tell them, Shabbat Shalom. And have a beautiful rest of the Sabbath. It is beautiful out there, I think. Yes. Is it cloudy and overcast and cool? It was so nice. I walked out this morning. It was so nice. It almost needed a little. Yes. Like something Even on. my big peer, he was like, I want to be outside. Shalom.